Welcome to Blockchain Recorded, the podcast for the tech curious, where we talk about anything and everything related to the exponentially evolving crypto blockchain and Web 3.0 space. Blockchain Recorded's mission is simple, to share knowledge and insight and help evolve education in blockchain fundamentals and decentralization solutions. We at Blockchain Recorded are not registered investment advisors and do not deal with financial or trading token elements nor offer any licensed financial services. The content of this podcast is provided for informational and educational purposes only, while the opinions of all parties involved are their own. I'm your host, Nina Tserer. I have a finance background, having worked on Wall Street and the pharmaceutical industry. After living in five countries and dedicating time to my family, I left the corporate world. Today, I work as a freelance consultant and am fascinated by the innovative space of crypto and blockchain, different ways of thinking, and the people that are making that happen. So, let's talk blockchain. Before we begin, let me say a few words about our sponsor. This episode's sponsor is Fourth Tech, which is short for Fourth Pillar Technologies. Fourth Tech is contributing to the blockchain infrastructure ecosystem and adding solutions to fulfill basic user needs on decentralized networks. For example, the 4DX protocol serves data file exchange between digital wallets. Imagine that you need to send some sensitive files across the globe using existing online services. How would you do it? probably over email, WhatsApp, Dropbox, etc. These are all centralized services where you as a user don't have any control. If you use 4DX, only the receiver's private key can decrypt the receiver's data files. Fourth Tech also invented their own wallet called 4, the 4ID solution, and 4NS on top. 4ID connects wallets when data is exchanged and serves as the public key exchange point between users. 4NS is a notarization service that uses the blockchain transaction hash to determine the origin and timestamp of the exchange data files. If used correctly, it could potentially render notaries obsolete. 4IM, or on-chain instant messaging, is a more recent commercial and user-friendly solution that everyone can understand. A lot of projects are solving the on-chain chat for obvious reasons of communication privacy. Until fast 3.0 blockchains, such as Solana, this was challenging to achieve without compromise. The 4IM protocol leverages the Solana blockchain to serve as an immutable ledger exchanging encrypted messages from 4Wall's sole address A to 4Wall's sole address B. Fully on-chain, one message represents one transaction. So to sum it up, fourth tech solutions are made for all end users and enterprises that need the security of decentralized systems. Check out fourth tech at fourthtech.io. This episode is also sponsored by CoinMarketLeague.com. CoinMarketLeague is a platform helping investors to find interesting coins and projects to gain more exposure and social following. At CoinMarketLeague, users vote for their favorite projects, discover events, and upcoming IDOs on different launch pads. Head on to CoinMarketLeague.com and learn more. So today I'm talking with Tomasz Svoboda an independent software architect and programmer. His involvement in electronics and programming stems from an early age. During his university studies, he co-founded Eledus, a company that develops and manufactures its own x-rays and CT systems for industrial inspection. The latter led him to his current work and contributions to digitalization efforts. His current focus is the application of blockchain and the creation of software tools related to it. Tomasz, welcome to Blockchain Recorded. Thank you for this introduction and uh, invitation for this talk. I'm happy to be here. Oh, you're welcome. It's it's our pleasure. You have uh, an extremely interesting background and originally, if I'm not mistaken, you're from the Czech Republic. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's correct. And did I leave anything out from your background? Uh, feel free to fill in if there's anything that I might have left out or if you want to add. No, probably, probably not. You make a good overview around my, my background because you know, I'm playing with the lots of lots of uh, different technologies. So that was probably mentioned. Okay, great. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely dive into into them and try to unpack because uh, it's a very you have a very colorful palette. Mm -hmm. um, and so, if you are, are you now located in Curaçao? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we moved to uh, Curaçao for some some month or two because we spent some time in the United States to visit our partners. But you know, that was too cold, <laughs> so we said, okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, on Curaçao it's much better weather, and so we can be connected to the internet. So. We moved for a couple couple of months, and then we will travel again. Oh, that's fantastic! Um, well, so let's just let's dive into our conversation. 
I, of course, I did some homework and on your webpage, you refer to yourself as the guy who takes things practically. Can you maybe just quickly talk about that? What does that mean to you? Uh, it means for me that I'm looking for the functionalities, usually. Yeah, uh, because you see some trouble and you will find some you know, possible solution for it. And it's usually a combination of different uh, functionalities of some technologies or whatever social skills. Yeah, it can be in any, any topics. And then I'm starting to looking for the suitable technologies to fulfill this functionality. So that's how I consider about the things uh, practically because I want to use them in the real world for real uh, uh, solving uh, the real troubles, but uh, the technology as itself usually doesn't solve it because it will provide you so many functionalities that you need to cover it. So that's uh, where I look, uh, what I'm looking for is some considering these technologies, use their functionalities and combine them what you need in the real world. Mm -hmm. um, you co-founded an x-ray company and sold it. And now you're continuing your path with digital transformation. Uh, you're the CTO uh, at Technic Insider. What exactly brought you to this decentralized world uh, we so talk about today? And when did you discover that blockchain tech would be also your focus? It was a long, uh, long way because uh, in my, my company leaders, we focused to deliver some inspection. Yeah, not just the X-ray. Mm -hmm. uh, it was the main topic, but my our main topic was solve the warranty applications and issues in the in the productions. So um, we needed usually much more than just the inspection device. Yeah, we needed uh, to store the data, cooperation with the quality managers, uh, with the management of the factory, with the de development department to fix this, and also with uh, the designers of the production lines. So when I discovered that we uh, we cannot do it alone, yeah, and people know this in many fields for many years, but uh, uh, they are trying to com be competitive. Yeah. And when I discovered that uh, we cannot do it alone, we need to connection between all of these people and devices. Uh, we were designing how to do it, but in uh, the company which was focused mainly to to inspection, it wasn't possible to uh, to start to project which will deliver us the connection to another systems and all these systems uh, what, what was on the market was uh, mainly proprietary yeah, mm -hmm. or built on the technologies which wasn't uh, possible to use it in, in the automotive production. So I, I decided to let this company and focus much more to digitalization or digital transformation of the companies. And then I spent two years with designing the strategy for one uh, huge automotive company in Czech Republic. They have a 10 factories uh, in the Czech Republic, one in China, we plant another in Brazil, and they were solving the same same troubles. So I said, okay, we need some common tool which will be open source, durable, and, and so on, so on. So, and when I did some some search through, through the internet, I haven't found it. So I said, okay, I will write it. Because most of the factories asked me to design them some strategy for digital transformation, and I said, oh, I, I don't have a, enough life, life and time to, to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. do it for all of you, but I can do it as open source. And even if I will spend one or two years writing something like this, it will be helpful because then it will release us from these troubles what we have. We will just start using it and it, because it will be free, everyone will have uh, the option to use it without any limits. If he will miss something, he can uh, you know, edit or, or whatever. So it, it's similar kind of uh, like Linux or whatever. And uh, after a couple of months, I wrote this. I said, wow, it's a revolution because I uh, went deeply and deeply into blockchain, open source, uh, not also another technologies which I knew from the industry. <coughs> and I said, OK, I will stay doing this because it's helpful, it's fun. Uh, I'm exploring the things what usual people uh, tell so with something new, but it's 14 years old <laughs> technology mm -hmm. like blockchain. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, it's it's really a revolution. And if I can see it earlier, good for me, because I can I can write it with maximum focus without any hype around it. So I've fallen in love with this environment and that's why I'm continuing. And maybe that's what brings me to main focus to, to blockchain, decentralization, open source and these things. 
Yeah, we'll definitely cover that. Be- before we actually, I, I pick your brain on open source and and your sort of your thoughts on on Web 3.0. Obviously, you you spoke about your auto industry experience and in terms of also the production line efficiency, right? You were involved in that. And I did actually in a previous podcast, I did hear you mention that you'd like to connect with Elon Musk. <laughs> I saw your tweets and heard this was your wish. Have you, have you managed to do that? No, I didn't have an opportunity. Okay. But I would love to meet him because I think we think uh, very in similar. We are on the same wave, I think, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, mm-hmm. with the thinking. But he just uh, grew up uh, in, in the United States, so he had uh, much better opportunities uh, to meet people from top business who was able to understand him because he's a visionary and a uh, great technician. So, you know, he can see the markets and the changing of the world much earlier than it happened. Yeah, but usually people from traditional business don't understand you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, in the United States, the space is much more open. So that's uh, why he is on the position where he is. And I really like, like to meet him because I think he's also thinking about uh, helping people and uh, putting things uh, open yeah, to help society. That's why they release their patents for free, Tesla, and so on. So. I hope it will happen in future, and if you yeah, know, definitely. You you're you're still anymore. fairly young, <laughs> so you have yeah. you have some time. So I just wanted to sort of I wanted to ask if that has happened yet because I did listen to some of the previous uh, recordings that you've done. So Tomash, you're a software art- architect. Could say that in this in this current digital transformational age, which obviously you also advocate. What is before we dive in and the open source topics? What's your take on Web 3.0? How do you see it evolve? Maybe uh, it depends on how you want to answer this question in the short term, even long term, if that's difficult for you to answer. So the next five to 10 years, it's up to you. How do you want to answer the question? Mm-hmm. You know, Web3 is just the term. It's similar like uh, Industry 4.0. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, people have been thinking about it for the, uh, Industry 4.0 about uh, 10 years, about uh, six last years. It could, uh, got some shape into some you know, initiative or some memorandum of some visions or the technologies which should be combined and how to use them to uh, provide simpler living in today's world with these technologies. Web3 is similar, yeah, and uh, I feel it like uh, just a set of the visions which have been aggregated for many, many years since we discovered uh, maybe the, the uh, like uh, text or, you know, typing, yeah, because uh, it just tells us how to use the internet to don't destroy us and these technologies. And now it's a time when we are starting to implement this as a complex vision. Because the last five years we've been developing the, the tools which can make this happen and shape them to the modern form which where they are optimized and so on. But there are so many of them that uh, common people don't have access to use them mm-hmm. and uh, don't, don't have access to use them correctly. So that's why the techno- uh, technology specialists are building this second layer solution, which can implement the web free uh, ideas into the real world, same as we are doing in the industry 4.0. For example, connect some collaborative robot uh, with uh, AR glasses, yeah, like uh, augmented reality. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but these are two different uh, technologies, but they can collaborate amazingly in the industrial field. But you need someone who will understand how to use them, when to use them, when is it profitable for the society or the company, whatever, and then provide it as a functionality. And the Web3 is con- uh, containing uh, lots of ideas and it's still waiting for its implementation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For example, what I'm doing is the Web3 implementation in the practice. So I really think that this will move the world because I see in it for many years, but I didn't use the, the pre uh, like term yeah, or password because this is just a password. But if you will listen to Vitalik, uh, before, you know, a couple of years he's been talking about uh, absolutely the same things, yeah. uh, and uh, I have it on my, uh, in my tweets or in my interviews, his ideas uh, before uh, this word uh, like uh, at three became the mainstream yeah. so mm-hmm. if, you, if you looking around you and you think about what's happening with the world with the governments with the technologies with the people uh, you will you know 
uh, get to the same point of things uh, or ideas that are described in Web3 mm-hmm. about uh, or like Web3. Yeah, and for, for all the listeners that actually that have never heard of this of Web 3.0, what you just alluded to, it's it's the next sort of inter- iteration of the internet that focuses also on decentralization, right? It aims to create a level of transparency where mm-hmm. smart contracts will control user data and transactions instead of centralized organizations. Mm-hmm. So sort of brings me to, our, to my next question. Uh, you mentioned before open source. So you are obviously a supporter of open source. Open source... Um, brings us transparency, democratization, decentralization. So all these sort of keywords we're we're dancing around today. Can you give us actually your views regarding this? Um, And just quickly, I I wanted to allude to, I wanted to add here that I listened to a previous podcast of yours where you mentioned that competition for you is a motivational factor in terms of education and continuously improving yourself. I I think that's actually a great attitude to have. So I I just wanted to add that in here. Just bringing back to the question, what is open source? What are your views on open source regarding mm-hmm. regarding how you how you take it? The open source is the knowledge and trust. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've been working on the edge of the proprietary world and open source world since I mean the child because I've been uh, creating the more proprietary solutions to find some, my position in, in this global system. But also I've been using uh, all these years the open source uh, software libraries and so yeah, to learn. And uh, when I was prepared, I've decided to be contributor of this open source open source world too, because uh, it's a part of that pre uh, ideas. Yeah, and I've been discovering this uh, during the, the working in my company. Uh, in Elidus because we had amazing uh, the software engineer who managed the software team and he was very enthusiastic into open source. In these days, I understood their uh, his philosophy, but we was you know paying the, the rent and salaries and so on, and we were a small company, so we need some uh, to create some you know movements in cash flow to uh, keep this uh, this company living. Yeah, but uh, when I uh, tried to do this, I was a little desperate yeah, because I was uh, I feel felt that uh, I should release these things uh, we building as an open source because we wasn't able to deliver it uh, for worldwide, but we knew that the people need it worldwide. Yeah. And we get in secret and spend lots of energy and money to keep it in secret just because the investors and, and the system need it yeah, or want it, want not need it. And uh, that's what uh, was a little distract me yeah, because uh, I was in, in this, you know, two, between two wheels. Yeah, and I feel that uh, it's much more correct to share the knowledge because we consume it uh, from the o- these open source, yeah, like what already exists, even the Linux and so on. And uh, after uh, another year, I discovered that, oh, the Linux is much more stable and these open sources are much more stable, but sometimes they still need a combination with some proprietary systems. So I've been starting to looking how to connect these words and, uh, you know, you can do it just with the open source because the community is changing. And uh, uh, very a huge motivation was to speak with um, uh, Professor Miroslav Barta. It's a famous Czech Egyptologist, and he described the seven rules of the rising and falling the civilizations. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of these rules is that something what brings you to the top will start to consuming your uh, internal sources. And uh, because usually you will don't let it and don't switch to another technology is because you think that that's what bring me to the top. So I will continue. It mm-hmm. will start to destroy you. And this is common archetype, which you can transfer to any part of the civilization. It can be one people or, or a small group or the whole uh, country or whole Europe or the whole uh, world. And, you know, we are on the top now because uh, we've been able to organize, to uh, aggregate the knowledge and create it and protect it and improve it and also be competitive. But now we are in the situation where we have so huge bunch of knowledge that we are not able to apply it. 
So it started to destroy us. We are still supporting uh, all of these patent offices, which are filled with patents who no one can use. Mm -hmm. Each university in the world are uh, solving, hey, how we can bring our patents into the uh, into the practice. No one is, is buying them and applying them because the company can uh, are able to build it much faster and you know maybe not so deep in, uh, deep into the technology, but they are really applying them. So that brings it them from profit. That's why they are mm -hmm. focused on this, and it's something to destroying us. Yeah, mm -hmm. because people, uh, most of the people are not able to select correct uh, smartphone what they need because there are thousands of them with different parameters which they don't know what does it mean and so on so on so we need to start slow down maybe be much more open to share this knowledge and spend some another decades like 10 years 15 years 25 years with exploring what we already have and how to use it instead of investing into the keeping everything in pri privacy and storing it and storing the absolutely amazing huge uh, amount of uh, world energy and people energy and time into protecting uh, something that we cannot use. Mm -hmm. So that's maybe the opinion why I decided to put all of these things as open source because it can inspire maybe some, some people, companies, leaders, to do the same thing. Yeah, that's actually a really great way to look at it, right? I mean, especially what you mentioned, your professor. It's, it's, it's. I think it's, it's very important to to also think about it that way. And uh, I agree with you. Um, I think you're right. I mean, this the, this whole notion of patents. Well, I mean, it does stem from a history of they are related to control and profit, right? I mean, just um, in in a in sort of um, layman's terms. Um, but the other thing is, you know, you mentioned, yeah, open source and share. The problem is that data is the biggest asset, for, especially for big tech, right? So it, it is it is a challenge, but I think it's important that I think more and more more and more people are realizing that now, um, and so hopefully we we can embrace on this open source sort of cultural shift, right? Because you can say that we are in this sort of open source culture movement. So just by having this conversation, where we're you know we're contributing to. Um, people realizing it's important yeah um but i will pass on the mic to you <laughs> um just go going back to to what you do in terms of your web page and and what you do is you have a v framework um it's called correct i read on your in uh, on your website there's a statement that sort of resonates with me because i'm not uh, i don't come from a from a developer's background but the statement is that you, what you said is that you can be part of the of the new global connected world just find what you like what your passion is and build your dream for the world you do not need to be a developer to bring your ideas to the global market so th this last part, right? I'm particularly interested in the no need to be a developer to bring the ideas to the open market part. It sort of goes back to what you said before. How does that work considering that developers are in big demand this day and mm -hmm. et cetera? H how do you, what are your thoughts there? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you to mention this because it's one of our main, main motto because we are a delivering platform mm -hmm. uh, for people who want to build something. It's similar, like, for example, WordPress, if you want to write blog or uh, create an e-shop or something like this, or just a simple web page, uh, you can build it on uh, top of some layer which is existing, like WordPress, and it will be very easy to build it, maintain it. Even if you are not uh, some good programmer, yeah, you would just search one tutorial on YouTube or whatever, and you will be able to create something new yeah, what represents you and can help other people. That's why you should build it mm -hmm. and uh, you know we are trying to do this no not trying we are already doing this more more than one year <clears throat> we are doing the similar thing like we uh, search through the, lots of uh, interesting technologies which are very deep and complicated for most of the people but they are delivering very successfully some functionalities we combine them wrote a bunch of code around which is important to connect them and handle them and restart them and so on. And then we provide just the simple functionalities. For example, you want to mint NFT, mm -hmm. but uh, when you want to mint NFT on some uh, 
the blockchain, you need to also write a lot of code around to discover if you have enough supply and so who is receiver and create transaction, sign, sign transaction and so on. But lots of people just want to mint NFT. Yeah, mm -hmm. correctly. And we're wrapping all of these functionalities under the one command and you will just type something like account dot send NFT and you will provide the data what you want to write into the NFT. So it's totally simple. Yeah, this this is sounds like <laughs> like the program, but we are building not just the programming libraries, but also the UI, also prepared application which you will just start or open the website and it's already working. And you can, for example, start writing blog immediately. Mm -hmm. in, uh, when you have a WordPress, you have to set up your server, install uh, the WordPress, and set up some basic things, <clears throat> and then you can start the right blog. But in here, uh, you will just open it and you will start writing blog. And uh, uh, the, the huge difference is that all of these blog posts are on your address. You own them. Yeah, when you will install it on some web hosting, still on the server uh, owned by the web hosting provider. Mm -hmm. So uh, if they will, you know, turn everything off, like their servers burn down, or they will have uh, some massive, uh, massive attack, the all of your posts can be lost if you don't have some backup and so on. But if you are building them on the on the top of some blockchain or minting them as an NFT on some blockchain, it uh, will stay on your address. You are the owner and can send them. So that's that's the difference. And there are much much more functionalities because this was just a particular example. But that's what we are trying to build: deliver functionalities instead of technologies. Yeah, um, you actually brought me to my next point, um, which was to ask you definitely about use cases and, and we'll definitely this this NFT example that you mentioned in terms of blogging. I actually that was one of my questions because I did I did read on a Medium post uh, about the fact that you can mint an NFT on the Neblio blockchain, right? So maybe we should take a few steps back and maybe you can just tell us first about the blockchain technology you use. Yeah, so maybe just tell us more about that and why Why is it Neblio? I'm, I'm, I know you've, <laughs> I know others ask you this all the time, um, mm -hmm. but it would be great just sort of unpack that first so that we can, mm -hmm. we can continue yeah. with, so the listeners can understand how, why Neblio and, and how it, how it works mm -hmm. as an infrastructure blockchain for you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for this uh, question. At first, I would just mention we are building the second layer, so it covers much more technologies than just the blockchain. Uh -huh. Also, the databases, APIs, IoT protocols, and so on, so on. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, uh, or also IDFS, for example. So, more types of the technologies, and we also decided to use blockchain technology as a technology. And then I did some search, uh, search through the implementation of the blockchain uh, into some. Uh, public blockchains like uh, you know Ethereum, Bitcoin. I started with these first, and mm -hmm. some overview it was so complicated mm -hmm. and lots of produced the JavaScript language. Mm -hmm. Said so, okay, I will go deeper, deeper. Uh, then I remembered that I saw some some blockchain in 2017 which was able to uh, to work on the Raspberry Pi. Many computers were very uh, low power in these days and also uh, lower power consumption. So mm, it looks interesting. And it was before the deep, uh, deep knowledge of some proof of work, blockchains, proof of stake, and all of these things. Yeah, I just mm -hmm. being driven by the intuition because I'm working into technologies for many years. I said, yeah, mm -hmm. Raspberry Pi has a future and it's a very powerful tool and it's uh, low, uh, low power consumption. So if this blockchain can work on this, wow, it's great. And they are able for three years. Okay. And then I uh, went deeply into this and I loved the simplicity. Yeah, because mm -hmm. the 
blockchain, uh, it's old technology, as I mentioned, I don't know, 14 years or something like this. But most of the people are talking about it like about new, total new technologies. So uh, they still don't uh, even use the absolutely basic uh, possibilities of the blockchain. So why uh, would I uh, select the blockchain, which has so many features? Yeah, it's a little danger because I don't know if people will be able to understand these features and use them for another five or ten years, especially in our industry, yeah, where they need totally stable things and maybe with less uh, less features, but uh, enough <coughs> enough for some five years or ten years of exploration of these new technologies. That's how the classic industry, government, and some hospitals and so on works. So I were looking for something like this total simple blockchain without any uh, any hype around yeah, mm -hmm. because uh, it must be you know uh, like enterprise solution yeah mm -hmm. and also developing uh, without connection to the price because if uh, you've been in crypto space uh, and blockchain space in 2017 18 mm -hmm. yeah there was a huge spike because it was some first public announcement that blockchain will survive Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. And after this boom, the lots of blockchains fell down with the price very, very, very big. Yeah, same as Nebula. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, it was a really good moment when to discover if someone means this seriously or not. Right. Because, uh, there were lots of blockchains which stopped the activity mm -hmm. on GitHub, and uh, you haven't seen the two years uh, some. A suitable comment or contribution to the project and after market went up again yeah they've been starting and you're saying and uh, we are for three years in here but when i searched through the nebula story i saw that these guys yeah they've been working and developing hardly to improve the blockchain but very carefully also and uh, even the price was up down doesn't matter yeah. Right. And uh, they didn't want to pay uh, some YouTuber, YouTubers which draw into graphs and these things <laughs> because, uh, you know, I, I hate it also because I asked <laughs> yeah. them for help. Yeah, I said, right. hey guys, we are writing the great tools which are free and documented and so on. Right. And please help us to promote us. And they uh, asked me $15,000 for one tweet. Yeah, that's oh. not normal. No. So I understood that this uh, this uh, Nibio team don't want to pay it also, and I've been on the same wave. So I said, mm, okay, it sounds interesting. I will start to discovering it, and after a couple of months, I discovered, hey, I can do maybe ninety five percent of all use cases I need in industry or in healthcare or whatever I explored in my past uh, years. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, that's enough what we need. So I, will, I integrated it, but also carefully, because I understood that we need to connect it with uh, another technologies. And in future, we will need some more complicated blockchains or, for example, blockchain, which much more focused to some gaming or these fancy NFT art and these segments, because we are taking it much more seriously mm -hmm. and with knowledge from, uh, from the industry and these, thing, uh, these uh, fields. Uh, we know how to prepare it for education and also industrial uh, segments. So I expected that in future I will add much more blockchains, which I tested on Dogecoin, which we integrated within a couple of hours uh, for sending transactions. And, well, so and can now, I just jump in there? What <laughs> the Dogecoin? That you you know you touched a very uh, sort of popular subject. Why why Dogecoin? Is it because everybody is talking about it and that's what people want, or is I mean, is there a specific reason? Yeah, uh, I've been testing uh, the multiple uh, multiple things uh, on, on the integration of the Dogecoin. At first, it's mm -hmm. totally simple, so I knew that I will not spend long time with uh, connecting it, and I can easily test the interoperability between the blockchains on the second layer uh, solution. <coughs> so this this was one reason, and I was able to, to select any other blockchains, also the Bitcoin and so on, but because uh, the uh, Bitcoin being updated to with Lightning Network and so on, I said, okay, it needs much more exploration. Dogecoin is uh, easy to understand because it's simple, it cannot do almost nothing, but I'm still able to do some magic with it. And uh, you mentioned also important thing, people like it. Yeah. <laughs> I know that it's not good because, you know, I'm hype, totally yeah. desperate because it's hyped and so mm -hmm. on. But uh, I wrote it in uh, one on my uh, GitHub in 
some announcement before one year that mm. this will play the huge role with acceptance of the blockchain as a technology because mm. people had to accept it. And if they choose that, okay, we like also fun. Most of the people know that Dogecoin is slow or has some issues. They don't understand the mm. technical background, but they feel, feel the same. Yeah, it's waiting for adoption because it's missing something, but smart people are working on it. And it's turned to global economy. No, it's a bit doge, but uh, it connected people from all around the world. True. And it makes something. And so that's why I decided, okay, I will integrate it because I'm writing it for the people, not just for me as some, you know, enthusiastic in, in the tech. So they selected it, I accepted it, and I think it will play the huge adoption. And even the Dogecoin is now slow, it's proof of work and so on. Mm -hmm. It still has a place and it's just a software. You can rewrite the whole software within half of a year with a bunch of uh, great skilled uh, full stack programmers. So uh, if we will miss something on Niblio, on Dogecoin or whatever, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, can, we can write it. Yeah. So, and it's much important to have the community which understand that you are working on something for them. Than mm -hmm. just saying, oh, I have the best technology, and then when I will need it, I will just pay these marketing com <coughs> marketing companies, and they will promote it and you know mm. force it to the people. I don't like this. Yeah, you should listen yeah. to market and market market into open source is the whole world. Mm. Uh, so that's. So the reason for Neblio, as an in, you mentioned, you were I mean, you needed an infrastructure blockchain, and this would be Neblio. I assume is proof of stake. So why not why not Polkadot or Solana or or does I mean d does it also have? I mean, you you did talk about. I mean, there has to be an interoperability factor, right? I mean, you to, for choosing Neblio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I searched through another blockchains also, but uh, as I said before, they had uh, so many few features yeah. that mm -hmm. you're not able to study it deeply, and if you don't study it deeply, you're not able to uh, do some good architecture of it. So I said, okay, uh, I spent some time on most of these blockchains to dis uh, discover their uh, APIs or their uh, software development kit. Mm -hmm. And also most of them are very missing the software development kits and especially for C sharp and so on. So even if I uh, like some uh, some blockchain and I said, mm, okay, this looks cool, it uh, it can work and I can use it. I've been missing the software development kit for C sharp and uh, another uh, languages which I'm using in the industrial world. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, if I uh, m must write this, like this software development kit or framework or how you would call it, <coughs> I should select something easy, yeah, but speed enough. And for example, Niblio, uh, in, I, don't, I don't know the parameters of Polkadot right now, but mm -hmm. in the days where I explore it, Niblio is twice faster with possible scalability upper. Mm, interesting. So I said, okay, it's, uh, I will just select uh, the cheaper and faster and more eco uh, blockchain instant. Uh, of course, for example, yeah. Polkadot, mm -hmm. which is also, I feel it, it is also great blockchain, but I didn't have a, even a uh, ability to study it. I think I'm spending a lot of time with studying, but it was so, so huge and lots of marketing around and so on. I said, okay, maybe they have just money for good marketing, but mm. in the term of the technology, it can be on the similar level. Mm -hmm. so, okay. So uh, Neblio it is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and for easy now, deployment. But, yeah. You know, for example, I asked the people who invested and helped to raise the Solana to the top. I asked them for help. I asked them, hey, man, so, uh, I'm writing uh, this platform, it's a second layer, and I need some blockchain for a gaming, uh, gaming world or these mm -hmm. uh, NFT images and so on. And I can integrate you in this yeah, mm -hmm. because you're covering some market where we don't want to focus and I'm looking for some suitable blockchain and probably with uh, what I'm watching, you uh, can be a good partner for this. Mm -hmm. And they sent me sent me away because they are just looking for profits. And I didn't understand it yeah, because I'm mm -hmm. offering my time and these technologies for free. And for interoperability, uh, it's very important because, you know, some uh, or most of the blockchains are doing absolutely the same mistakes what uh, we did in past years in the industry, like direct in interoperability. They are not uh, probably understand the digital this will destroy them. The interoperability must be placed in most of the cases 
in the second layer to be able to maintain it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, this was also a very huge point for me because when I saw some blockchains which are just doing uh, and working on in, in direct interoperability directly between the blockchains on the first layer as, uh, and they are mostly doing this for marketing to have partners and announcements and so on. I said, no, go. <laughs> keep, it, yeah. keep it away yeah, from me. And, I need yeah, something yeah. simple and I will write a second layer for interoperabilities and in maybe far future we can move some part of this interoperability to some first level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. So this sort of it, this brings me to more use cases. Um, so we can talk about we talk about the NFT and we'll we'll talk about it a little bit more later. This brings me to um, sort of a commercial use case. I also checked out a previous podcast. You were speaking of a payment scheme that you created using a virtual open source framework with Neblio. Where does this project stand now? Oh, yeah, it's still moving forward. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> so every day we are working working mm -hmm. on it uh, now with uh, several teams all around the world. So uh, this payment system, uh, you know, the Neblio is a blockchain, but uh, it's also used in the implementation for cryptocurrencies. Right. So it has the the native native uh, mm -hmm. system for processing payments. It's already on exchange, yeah, same mm -hmm. as Bitcoin and so on. And the providing payment is just a functionality. Yeah. So I have read this functionality, and it uh, now it won't, doesn't matter if you are paying with the blockchain, uh, Niblio or Bitcoin or Solana, or mm -hmm. uh, if you are paying with the classic currency. Yeah, it's just a functionality abstracted for the user who needs to provide some payment. So we implemented the solutions for this uh, on the uh, driver level. So programmer can call it from some library library as a functionality, <coughs> or you can start some application and call it from API if you are a system integrator. Mm -hmm. Or uh, if you are a front-end developer, you can use the component, uh, which is prepared in library, and it will draw you the form and prefill everything uh, to be prepared for the payment. Or you will just open the whole application like the NFT, and it can create you the payment link, payment uh, QR code. You can share it or print it. And then anyone can can pay you. So even if you are selling hot dog uh, in some stand, you will uh, create the NFT uh, and place it in in your uh, in your address. This uh, will uh, con uh, contain some price, and this NFT will create you the buy link which you can print, and people can buy uh, the copy of it. Yeah. So even mm -hmm. if, uh, you can print it to the real world, and Someone will just read it, and he will be able to immediately buy buy uh, the stuff what you are selling. So, mm -hmm. And you don't need to be programmer. So we are delivering the, the payment as the function. That's that's so cool. And you have these NFT ready solutions, right? You you talked about so you're talking about the payment system now, but you talked about the using or minting an NFT for content publication. So like you were talking before, a, a blogger can do a publication as an NFT and then store it in a wallet, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's uh, correct. You know, uh, you have to think about uh, the NFT as an architectural pattern. Yeah, yeah. It's a okay. system how you can uh, sort the data or trace the data or move the data across the future mm -hmm. between some mm -hmm. parties. And then you can use it to solve some classic troubles uh, what people have, like mm -hmm. process payment or send a message or uh, create a ticket. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been exploring these use cases uh, for you know, more than half of a year, it's mm -hmm. maybe three quarters of a year now, because before, uh, before uh, last summer, we already had a working NFT messaging, NFT images, NFT music, NFT uh, tickets, NFT events, <laughs> NFT payments, <laughs> NFT profile, and so on. <laughs> I've been also able to to shape uh, or use this architectural pattern in almost anything uh, mm. what I thought about, and it usually simplified uh, the coding absolutely. Yeah, like eighty percent of coding being solved with just using this pattern. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Uh, that's what we are preparing, and it's not just about the images and music. Right. 
it will be re really the game changer in the future. And I think, and I'm happy that uh, more and more people are discovering this, even if they think we are competitors. I'm so happy that they are working on the same thing because it will help uh, the community to save a lot of time during their work and also mm -hmm. lots of energy. So nobody uh, doesn't care who will write it the best. So we just right. need it as a society. So. Yeah, I'd, I'd, like I said, even before, I think that's a great attitude to have. Um, and just also what you mentioned, I like how you said it's, you have to think about it as an architectural pattern. I saw a tweet of yours where you control a robot with NFT transactions. Uh, this is another <laughs> example, you know, to someone who is not a developer and just to, to, to sort of get their mind around this, um, that's... That's amazing. I mean, you you you're basically choosing, uh, or you can uh, tell us about that because um, you were you you were with NFT transactions. You were moving the robot. You know, I've been for more than two year, years uh, mm -hmm. alone, uh, close in the in the <laughs> house with two cats. And, oh, so this uh, is like a COVID. <laughs> no, 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 no. It wasn't just because of COVID. I bought some house uh, close to nature to be calm, but with high speed internet, and you know, mm -hmm. I've been a little lonely. So I borrowed a, a robot, ABB robot, from the factory because it was turned off <laughs> on production. <laughs> And I said I need a trend, so we spent a nice uh, half of the half of the year together. And during <laughs> this, I explored how to talk with him. Yeah. So I, you know, That's discovering amazing. how the protocol works and write our uh, own own wrapper for communication with these ABB robots. And during this exploration, I saw the absolutely huge security issue. And it's not just about the ABB robots; they have the most of them, and also the inspection system and so on. Because uh, when you will load some program into it, uh, it can look the, almost the same, but um, uh, it can be affected with some hacker and so on. And because the factory is don't watch uh, uh, and don't have uh, one common system how to robot can check if he has loaded correct program, he can start to do uh, another program which just looks similar, but it can, for example, move and destroy the technology or in worst case kill someone. Yeah, these are two meters long robots yet. Yeah, it's not mm -hmm. just some sort of toy. But with NFTs, I was able to uh, wrap the program, you know, calculate some some hash and these things to, to prove that it wasn't changed. Then it is possible to uh, go through the address of, for example, a uh, engineer or quality manager or a maintainer and whoever or owner mm -hmm. of the factory. And then uh, the robot can independently on the, the public blockchain check that no one changed it. Yeah, if it will be on private blockchain still can be you know, manipulated and so on. But uh, with the system, uh, what I designed also for uh, all NFT ownership uh, like analysis or whatever, uh, it's possible to check that uh, you are still working with the public blockchain, you have the correct information and then that you're running the correct program. So that's what I tested with this ABV robot and also with the inspection cameras because it's the same, same issue, but just with the inspection program. Yeah. Hacker will, for example, remove some, some edge uh, for controlling something and it can uh, you know, uh, go through uh, the uh, not good parts, which has some mm -hmm. defect. And when they will put it into cars and car will, for example, run 1,000 kilometers or 10,000 kilometers, it can break the car. And you will discover this uh, hacker, hybrid hacker attack after a half of year or one year as a current day application where they will need to put all the cars to the to the, some service place or maintenance place and change this. It's absolutely destroying. So mm -hmm. and blockchain can protect this. So that's why I tested all of these different cases uh, and implement the possible solution into the framework. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's fascinating. What would be your take on adoption of all of this? You know, you're actively discovering ways of using blockchain in, in all of these sort of 
different use cases and infrastructure products and of course robotics i mean you can you can apply that across the board for anything really um okay you did mention the security issue but given all this and just maybe taking a step back i mean given that you're partnering with with a lot of different companies and 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 so forth um where do you think we are now in terms of this adoption process and are we further down the road or are we not further down the road what do you think? What challenges do you see? Uh, the trust and understanding mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. the respect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Same as I respected the whole life, the older uh, guys or girls from the industry and science, mm-hmm. and I am trying to teach from them a uh, whole life because they have lots of experiences. They uh, are usually uh, are stuck in the uh, old processes and technologies mm-hmm. and in, yeah. uh, ignoring the changing of the world. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, uh, me and you know people around thirty mm-hmm. are trying to help them mm-hmm. because we see the space how it's changing. We see these revolutions. Yeah, we have these ambitions and so on, and lots of energy. And uh, I've been respecting these uh, these people for a long time. That's why we have uh, great partners uh, yeah, in uh, in the e framework because we found the respect uh, uh, and understanding with uh, some of them. But still, most of these companies are think that they know this best. Mm. And even if they are sixty and they are telling that blockchain will not work and cryptocurrency not working and so on, that people will not use it. It's using uh, the half of the world. If I'm, you know, no, yeah, hyperbolic thing it is, but yes. uh, they're uh, in lots of things, right? And it's good to listen her, uh, listen them, but, but also uh, they are losing uh, the the you know uh, the reality in uh, where the uh, world is moving, and they are not able in most of the cases understand and respect mm-hmm. the younger uh, developers that they are true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I had the same situation in uh, the Brown Group. It was very hard for me, but uh, then we found a way how to communicate and you know, how to understand each other. Because, you know, there were five programmers with 20 years of experiences writing the uh, production lines. Mm-hmm. And all of them have uh, been uh, telling me that it's not possible to write <laughs> this and this and this. That it's not possible. Mm-hmm. So I sat and wrote it. Yeah. <laughs> and even if they uh, if they saw this live, they still been telling it's not working, it will not work, and so on. I said, watch, <laughs> yeah. and, mm. and show them the running pro- uh, production line, uh, which was able to do things what they said it's not possible. Yeah. So they are fighting instead of be happy that someone young who is experiencing right. it are trying to help them to solve this easily and show right. them some new technologies because they've been. Uh, writing these production lines, so they didn't have too much time to explore it. I've had uh, the tw- uh, you know, more than 20 years of exploring technologies for now. And because I had the time and know some strict terms and so on, I had much more opportunities to play with it and discover it deeply. Yeah, because mm-hmm. they've been working to help me uh, pay the school in my country yeah, because they've been building the economy. And now when they should look for the retirement and some calm, uh, enjoying their life, they are totally worried that someone is replacing them or <laughs> replacing them right. in that, with right. technology in this thing. And that's right. about adoption. If they will understand that uh, the young people and you know, 30 you have also some experiences, it's not so young, they are trying to help them with these modern technologies, right. it yeah. will start adoption. But right. we are, have to find uh, the respect to each other, same as I respect them. They have to respect the younger uh, programs that we know what we are doing. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so this, th- yeah, it, it is this challenge that you you encounter yourself. I mean, it's it's interesting. I think um, if we sort of work cross border and let's uh, let's sort of uh, not include the U.S. in this. Yeah, I mean, and not to say that this is like a geographical thing, but th- there's al- there was always sort of the problem if you are very young and ambitious and smart and you achieve a lot and sort of like the first ten years of your working life post uh, university and you come across industry experts who have been in it in tw- like you said 20 30 years there's always sort of a resistance factor yeah mm-hmm. and um, the biggest reason why someone can't trust is 
just just the fear factor and maybe a little mm-hmm. bit of cognitive dissonance like you said you you fixed a, you actually fixed a problem in front of their eyes and they just weren't willing to see it but i think in the end yeah you, it takes one person to see it so that you have some kind of a mentor that that embraces this yeah, yeah it, that that can be I, I can i can empathize with that i think i not to not to not to sort of criticize europe but i think a lot sometimes in some of the european countries or d- depends on if you go to the dinosaur company <laughs> mm-hmm. they're not willing to change uh, but but they're going to have to right i mean they're, they're just they're going to have to or um, they can they would die yeah it happened in uh, 89 in Czech Republic or Czechoslovakia right. we had an amazing company it was called Tesla by the yeah. way yes and it's yes. been a huge producer of the electronic components and mm-hmm. even the electron microscope yeah they started the electron microscope in 50s in, in the Czechos- or 60s in Czech- Czechoslovakia mm-hmm. and after the 89 they were filled with absolutely amazing people with smart oh, yeah. minds. But Very. the structure was mm-hmm. so, so slow. And mm-hmm. because of uh, the open gates and uh, the, the market from the West, which was, you know, 10, 10 years before, the Tesla wasn't able to be competitive. And uh, it's been, uh, you know, split to, to smaller parts uh, to prevent uh, the bankrupt. They said, okay, who wants to buy the department and run it as own company with just these five guys from this department and so on. And uh, it was split. It. And now in lots of cities, we have about 100 electronic companies. What uh, Each of them has more than 100 uh, people employed and it's working. Mm-hmm. And this is going to happen with these giants if they will not change their mind and open themselves and so on. Mm -hmm. And Microsoft Microsoft understood it. So before a couple of years, they starting to put everything open source. And it's, you know, going to be bigger and bigger until they will release the whole Microsoft as open source, I think. If they will don't do this, the, the, uh, you know, energy is (laughs) spent for keeping this privacy and system under control will destroy them from inside. So any of these companies has a possibility to choose uh, its destiny. Right. And uh, well, a good thing that, I mean, yeah, the, the past few years have been difficult for, for everyone, but I think um, a good thing about this sort of borderless connection and, and the fact that we are uh, just having dialogue on, on and using podcasts as a platform is the, the fact that you can find this brain power <laughs> and use it. So someone like you, hopefully just, you know, I would say just um, relax <laughs> and just keep keep doing what you're doing because yeah. that that that's just I think that's the formula to just progression just just keep keep going right. I will. Sometimes Let's, it's hard, yeah. but uh, oh, I, 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 more, can imagine. More mem- I can imagine more members are getting on board. So right, you know, right. now okay. I'm not the one who is working on this project. So it's this year right. is starting very, very good. Mm-hmm. Well, good, good. Let's sort of take a take a take a turn. Um, this has been a, a great conversation. Um, and maybe touch a little bit on. So we talked about use cases and and in terms of V framework, um, having NFT solutions or or just sort of you are have your your NFT ready. Well, actually, I may pick your brain on this. Do you do you still think you've, you've expressed this? Um, do you still think that blockchain tech will replace the classic economic system, or do you think it will coexist? Okay, if I will. Um play a little with the economic system, like meaning of it. Mm-hmm. It's the trust between the people. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, I hope this will develop. Yeah, it will revolutionize and it will move forward, but mm-hmm. not replace, uh, like traditional system was built on the same ideas. Yeah, mm-hmm. but uh, its implementation to the classic money was uh, designed on the old systems. So right. it makes sense uh, to evolve it because we know that it's consuming lots of um, money, energy. It's very slow, very bureaucracy. So the implementation of the economic system between the society uh, needs to be a little redesigned and upgraded. But with cooperation yeah, with these uh, already existing system, it was absolutely the same as in the factory. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because... Uh, uh, they built uh, everything based on ERP systems, yeah, like uh, 
a resource planning software and uh, enterprise resource planning uh, software, which can handle the management of the people and invoicing and all of these things. And then they started to connect everything inside of this ERP. It allowed them to uh, manage process automatically and so on. So it was absolutely amazing move. But after 10 or 15 years, they are totally stuck on it. And mm -hmm. they need, they know uh, that they need the modern architecture based on the industry 4.0 logic and visions, but they are not uh, able to immediately skip on this yeah, or switch to this. So we, uh, as a part of the digital transformation is also some system and steps, how to do it to, uh, during the 24 seven run, same as the economy is running. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So even if uh, when we saw that some system is very old we, and we didn't have uh, enough uh, people and technologies to switch it, uh, we had to, for example, start watching the data or simulate the data, run it in parallel, watch it, and in right moment transferring the groups uh, which are prepared to transfer to to new technology. And same will happen with the blockchain and current uh, cryptocurrencies because it's amazing, cheap and fast system which can send, send you immediately payment and together with the data, you can split it anytime, you can merge this point anytime. So you don't need to go find some place where you will get some change. Yeah, you have a change anytime when you need it. Yeah, that's what no <laughs> currency, classic field currency has. So, mm -hmm. if, uh, so this is revolutionary and uh, people are not prepared to use it yeah, because they don't understand it or scary. But I think within a couple of years, if uh, the governments will be open to, to cooperate with people like me, yeah, it will move forward and it can replace the, the technology what we are using for creating our uh, now econo uh, economic, uh, economic layer or functionalities and environment in today's world. Yeah, lots of lots of good information there. And it needs to be synchronized. Yeah, uh, right. I saw there lots of revolutions in the in the world, like Wall Street bets, and I wrote about this on my on my uh, GitHub at the start mm -hmm. of next uh, last year. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, it must be synchronized, otherwise, will people will go mad in this modern gold rush, and uh, they they will destroy the system because they need new technology, because they see these benefits and they understand that it can save them, I don't know, 20, 30 persons from their taxes, yeah, for mm -hmm. example. So they will do this revolution. And if uh, the governments will not you know, uh, uh, cooperate, it will happen organically. And it's very bad, like French Revolution. Of course. And, uh, if, uh, but people on the other side, people must understand that the system to be developed is very slow. Uh, you cannot push uh, or uh, force the governments and the huge industries to accept it immediately. They are not able to do it. They need at least two years or three years. But there must be some huge memorandum. Okay, we are starting to work, in, uh, work on this. Watch this. Watch this in open repositories. Do you have ideas? Yeah, let's contribute and make it make some system in this, tran in this transfer and global digital transformation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But people still fighting because, you know, people want freedom and, and these you know, uh, decentralized technologies, which are great, but they have to be careful because it can destroy them. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. You don't need to put decentralization everywhere. No. So, and same the governments and same the industry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when we will connect together, it will work. Yeah, and we have to respect that, you know, uh, some of these par partners are not so fast as the people. If you will go to classic factory, you will not see many people uh, from uh, with the working uh, smartphone, like for doing augmented reality in these things. Mm -hmm. But half of the world uh, played the Pokemon Go and uh, <laughs> catching with augmented reality Pokemon on the streets. Yeah. <laughs> And in the factories, they still don't have it. If you will explain them, hey, buy 20 of uh, these good uh, smartphones to, to your maintainer, they will fight with you and they will looking for the, some rentability and these shits and uh, all of these managers have the two smartphones in their pockets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they are very slow, they are conservative, but that's uh, why they are working and we have 
level stable cars and then these things and secure things around us. But people mm-hmm. don't understand it because they see that even their grandma apply Pokemon Go. So why <laughs> the factories are not able to buy it and just start using it? Yeah. And these worlds don't understand each other. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Interesting. Well, well on that note, Tomasz, I want to ask you, what does your future roadmap look, roadmap look like? What do you have in store in terms of V framework and and your other projects? We have some expected uh, roadmap uh, in the V framework, but you know the changes uh, world is changing every day. So of course we are flexible in the strategy. We have some key points, but our main point is adoption. So uh, mm-hmm. we will do anything, but we will feel that uh, a real adoption of these technologies um, will move us forward. Yeah. Some steps we already published on our website. Mm-hmm. More steps uh, our partners and uh, future, I hope future investors uh, know much more deeply mm-hmm. because we have more than 80 page a business plan or strategy for next five years and then long term strategy like 25 and so on. So uh, we have a lots of steps and we will see how uh, the environment will uh, change and uh, that uh, can change also our roadmap, but the adoption is the main. Tomasz, I mean, we, we've we've covered so much here. Um, we're almost up to an hour. Um, is there is there anything else that you'd like to add that maybe I have not asked you? Maybe not for this moment. Maybe not for <laughs> continue, continue in the future because you are uh, asking very good questions and mm-hmm. uh, you are open to discuss about these topics and spread them to the world. So oh, absolutely. maybe if we can talk uh, another and record another podcast and prepare oh, for example, some questions with uh, anyone can ask us because I'm very open, transparent guy. So I'm on Twitter, LinkedIn, Telegram. You can ask me uh, any another question or they can send it to you and we can prepare another interview based on what community would like to know about the topics would be, you know, just slightly grabbed today. Well, that sounds that. great, Tomas. You just mentioned uh, probably the, way, the best way to follow you is uh, your Twitter account, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then maybe you just mentioned where else can people reach you? Yeah, uh, Discord, Telegram. Discord, Telegram, Twitter, the usual. <laughs> the, the best is the Twitter or if uh, they uh, need some, some more you know, business communication, I'm available on the email. So they mm-hmm. can uh, search through website vframework.com and there is all information. Programmers can reach me in the repository also. So vframework.com and your Twitter handle is? Physicton, like Physica, but with F. Yeah, just and with a Y, yeah? Yeah. Well, thank you, Tomasz. This was a great conversation packed with, a, I would say, an eclectic yeah. array of practical examples of where to use blockchain from production lines to NFTs, reaching the world of bloggers, <laughs> content publishers, robotics. It really helps to talk it out with different guest speakers for our audience and to help illustrate examples. Um, also for risk averse listeners, right, who are listening and who are still skeptical of how blockchain can be used. And in the end, as as sort of this has been the common thread. It's about adoption and trust, and we can help facilitate this. So Industry 4.0 is not necessarily a scary paradigm shift. Tomas, uh, I wish you good luck. And like actually you mentioned, we would we would also love to have you back. So maybe in some time we see how V Framework is doing and, and we can explore some other topics in, in detail. Thank you very much for this interview. It was a pleasure to talk with you and I hope... Uh, the listeners will, will like it and we will stay in touch. Thank Great. You very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Tomas. Thanks again to our guest, as well as thank you everyone for listening. A big thanks goes to Fourth Tech and Coin Market League for co sponsoring this episode. Thank you also to the Baria Music team for providing their music. You can check out their latest album on bariamusic.com. You can find all supporting information on our website, blockchainrecorded.com, and listen to us on Google, Apple, and Amazon Podcasts, as well as Spotify, Radio Public, and Stitcher. Stay healthy and tuned for our next episode. 